Welcome to lecture 42. We shall be starting a bipolar device technology from today. Uh, next uh, few lectures will be on the BJT HBT. So, we have to understand that uh, for RF uh, electronic applications bipolar devices are also very critical. There are many applications where bipolar devices are very useful because they can really surpass the performance of CMOS. Uh, and so many times bipolar devices are combined with CMOS and we call them bi CMOS technology for instance. There are 3, 5 compound semiconductor based uh, bi bipolar device technologies. In fact, our cell phones, our smartphones today, each of our cell phone has a gallium arsenide based HBT as a or a bipolar heterojunction bipolar transistor for a power amplifier. So, it is a very critical technology and it is useful for us to understand the basics of the same. Before we start, I will have to make it clear that the assumption is that you are familiar with the basic operational physics and the working of the device of a BJT or a bipolar transistor. Only if you are familiar with the basics of a BJT, we can you can understand what we are going to talk about in this series of lectures because we are going to talk about slightly advanced for RF devices. Okay. So, with that we come to the white board here. So, we are going to talk about both bipolar junction transistor and hetero junction bipolar transistor. This is a BJT, but in a heterojunction system okay typically compound semiconductor or maybe silicon germanium all right so what are the topics that we are going to cover here there are quite a few topics and uh, as you can see some of these topics might be a little unfamiliar uh, these are pertinent to the rf electronic applications so first we'll talk about gummel plot okay we'll talk about the physics of common base common emitter applica application or not application but the working we are not going to talk about the circuit we are going to talk about the physics of common base and common emitter. Then we are going to talk about Kirk effect which is a high injection effect. We will talk briefly about the Ebers small model which is useful for uh, you know spice model and other things. We will have a small discussion on a small signal equivalent circuit. Then we will come to modern silicon BJT people and how you design an emitter and base. And then we will switch to heterojunction devices. We will talk about the basics different base kind components graded base okay very important. We will talk about things like collapse of the current gain, the something called emitter ballast and base ballast. Then we will talk about the high frequency signal, high, fre excuse me, high frequency performance of HBT. Then we will go to silicon germanium. It is a very critical technology today. We will talk about the layout of silicon germanium, the parasitics and the graded base silicon germanium device. We will have just one slide probably on the differences between FET, say MOSFET, HEMPT, etc., etc., versus bipolar devices. What is the pros and cons for each side and then we will talk about commercial and you know real world compound semiconductor HPT and silicon germanium HPT. Now, you may not be able to buy discrete silicon germanium HPT commercially they are used in an integrated fashion in large number in a chip okay in a in maybe in a front end module of a of a, of a cellular radio. So, we will talk about some of those commercial device applications and specs also it is very very difficult to find out in the internet about specific specifics or a specific of such devices and device technologies that are used in current day smartphones say an iPhone 12 or a, you know an Android phone it is very difficult. So, you have to understand what kind of chips are used and then go back and find out the probable device technologies that are used in those chips okay. We will come to that towards the end of this lecture and anyway, end of this module anyways. So, uh, just to give you a flavor this is a this is a schematic of a compound semiconductor HBT hydrojunction. You can see that there are different layers of material of, of the 3, 5 family. You have an indium gallium arsenide cap, you have an indium phosphide emitter, you have an indium gallium arsenide base, then indium gallium arsenide collector, maybe an indium phosphide sub collector. These are different layers and the choice of these layers is determined by the performance that you need in terms of the gain, in terms of the size, the parasitics correct in terms of the cutoff frequency, the breakdown so many parameters will influence what kind of layers you want, what are the thicknesses you want even the processing for instance you have a titanium gold maybe a contact here there is a passivation here which could be silicon nitride many things. This is a scanning electron microscope again of a compound semiconductor HBT you can see this is an emitter can you see that emitter here then this is the base here it is feeding the base like that okay like a loop around base around the emitter and this is a collector. Okay. This is compound semiconductor where layers are vertically stacked, but in silicon or in maybe even in silicon uh, germanium okay, you do not have such vertical layers stacked on top of another it is pseudo lateral you know. So, there is this emitter, there is this base in the same plane, there is this collector in the same plane. 
So you need to have a st you have a structure like that where the emitter is n type, but the base is p type. So you have a p type well here. On in between there's a deep well of n type or a substrate of n type where you have a collector here. This is just a simplistic view. There are many many other as aspects related to this, but this is just a this fact that silicon or silicon germanium will look something like that, whereas compound semiconductor will look something like that. HBT, okay, bipolar devices. You know the working of BJT, which is that there are two PN junctions back to back. This is the emitter, this is base, this is collector. Typically, you will forward bias this junction so that electrons are injected from emitter to base, holes are injected from base to emitter, which is actually not desired because this is a useless component of current. And then this junction is reverse bias, so that there is a high field here. All the electrons that reach here will be swept away by the field and will come out in the output as the collector current. In the base, you want it to be as thin as possible so that minimum recombination takes place here. Whatever is recombined will not reach here. So you want the recombination to be minimum so that maximum current reaches the other side of the base. And this component that is back injected hole into the emitter is useless because this is coming out of the input and it does not contribute to anything. So you want to minimize this desired, not the undesirable current. And the way to minimize this in kind of a silicon BJT is that the emitter doping ND should be much larger than the base doping NB. The base doping should be much smaller. In that case, you will have a good injection but a poor back injection which is what is desired. But a lower base doping leads to high base resistance which is very very bad for noise and which is very very bad for cutoff frequency f max. Okay. The way it am this BJT amplifies signal is that a small change in the base emitter voltage leads to an exponential change in the base emitter current because it is an exponential dependence no? e to the power QVB by KT. And because most of the currents from the emitter will reach the collector, the collector current also depends exponentially on the base emitter voltage. So a small base emitter voltage which can be triggered by a small base current. A small base current can basically trigger a very small base emitter voltage adjustment that leads to an exponentially large current being injected and also exponentially large current flowing out in the output. So a small trigger in the base current which leads to a small change in the base emitter voltage can lead to an exponentially large change in the collector output current. Okay, so that is the basics of the signal being amplified. All right. Now this is a Gamel plot. What is Gamel plot? In Gamel plot, you are plotting on the y-axis the collector current, which is the output current, and the base current, which is the input current. You are plotting the this is the collector current or the output current. This is the input current or the base current. You are plotting them together as a function of the base emitter voltage. So initially as you can see the slopes look different then they have a constant slope like that. This is the desired range and then eventually they will try to meet each other and then in this part you, you, you do not have a working device. This part is where you have very high series resistance. You have very high series resistance that is coming in and you have high injection plus high injection effect. High injection effect will lead to an ideality factor of 2 and that will lead to this collapse kind of collapse here. Okay, So that you will see a collector current dropping. So the base current, the base current will experience series resistance but the collector current will also experience high injection. So the collector current will drop very fast here and this part is where your device basically is not functioning anymore because you do not have a collector to base current ratio there, it is approaching 1. So this is the desirable range here, Okay, this is the desirable range where the ratio of the 2 is a beta and if you plot the beta it will go something, the beta will look very flat here and then it will beta will drop here, beta will drop here. So this beta being flat is the regime where you want to operate which is basically your high gain regime. At very low injection you have recombination generation current where the ideality factor is again 2 and because of this ideality factor being 2 you have a lower slope of the you know the base current here and you can see that your, your gain does not exist. At very very low voltages you do not have a gain you know this is your Gamel plot okay this is your Gamel plot. All right. So, and this is of course assuming there is no leakage but once you have surface leakage the, the gain and other performance parameters will go down even more okay. This is generic of HBT, or B, sorry, any BJT. Okay, uh, of course, there's a nearly constant ratio of the uh, the collector and base current because the ideality factors are both both one. That's why the, the ratio is constant. If the ideality, ideality factor of either of them will shift, then your be, your beta or your the ratio of the collector and the base current also will shift. Okay. All right. This is your beta. You can say HFE. You know, it's like the gain. You can see that the gain more or less stays flat. Then it drops because of high injection effect here. And it is very slow here because at this point you have high generation recombination effect, which is why you know the collector current has a certain ideality factor e to the power some QVB by some ideality factor, and the base current 
we will have e to the power q v b by some identity factor m for instance ok. So, this slope initially th this here your you have the same identity factor both, but here your identity factor is 1 minus 1 by m here the identity factor is minus 1 because your collector current has an identity factor of 2. So, you collect in this regime your collector current will go as e to the power 1 by 2 q t by something something the identity factor is 2 the base current will go by u e to the power q by 1. So, effectively you have a negative you know your current your beta will drop crazy your collector current is basically approaching the base current and falling down ok. It is very important to understand as a lower lower current levels I told you the generation recombination dominates. So, the base current will have a higher identity factor and that is why the total identity factor of this entire curve is 1 minus 1 by m 1 minus 1 by m ok. At, uh, at in the in the in the regime the ideal regime the ratio is 1 and in the higher regime the ratio is 1 minus 1 ok that is why your current falls all right. This drop of the collector current or you can say the drop of the, the gain at higher uh, collector current level is called Webster effect just just to keep in mind Webster effect ok. Now, common base and common emitter mode we all discuss about common emitter and common base mode in our circuit in our analog mix signal or in our RF circuit courses we use the common base and common emitter mode for circuit design. However, the physics of common base and common emitter are usually not discussed and this is very profound the, the physics of common base and common emitter is not very trivial. So, we will talk about that here ok. So, if you look at a common base configuration here the base is grounded correct. So, you will be putting input as the emitter current the base is grounded of course, there is a current that flows into the base and you are putting input as the emitter current and most of the emitter current is coming out as the collector current all right. So, emitter to collector voltage is VEC base to collector voltage is VBC. What are you going to plot in the output characteristics in the output characteristics you are going to plot the output current which is your collector current versus the output voltage which is your because ground is base no. So, you have to reference everything to the base VCB V base is 0, but you you still call it VCB collector to base voltage is the output voltage and you get a behavior something like that. These are these are 6 milliam, 5 milliam, 4 milliam, 3 to 1 milliam of emitter current that you are pushing from the emitter side yourself and you are getting an output current of 6 milliam, 5 milliam, 4 milliam close to that. It is very close to that it is not exactly that it is close to that it is alpha the alpha is the ratio of the output current by the input in emitter current. So, you define an alpha for a common base mode and the alpha should be as close to 1 as possible 0 0.99, 0 0.999 those are good alpha you know you should go to very high as close to 1 as possible ok. Now, and this is of course, cut off the way to measure cut off is that you keep the base uh, floating ok. You keep the oh sorry this is your cut off. So, this is your emitter is I e is equal to 0. So, you keep the emitter floating you keep the emitter as floating if you keep the emitter as floating then your emitter current I e will be 0 and under I e equal to 0 you are going to measure the voltage between the base and the collector which is this and it can what is the voltage that it can withstand this is your breakdown voltage. So, that is your V C B O or B C O that is your breakdown voltage in common base mode when your collector or emitter current is kept floating emitter emitter contact is kept floating. So, your emitter current is 0 ok. So, this is your common base configuration in the common emitter configuration what happens is that your emitter is grounded you are injecting a base current here and the direction looks opposite because the direction of hole you know flow and things like that. So, you have a base current here and you are going to get an output current I c here. So, what you are plotting here is the output current I c you see 6 milliam 5 milliam 4 3 etcetera and you have a base injection current like a 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.03 0 0.04 0 0.05 0 0 milliam that you are injecting here you are getting an output current of 5, 6, 4 etcetera. So, the here you define beta, beta is basically the output current I c by the input current I b which in this case roughly looks like 100 correct it roughly looks like 100 the beta is 100. And the breakdown you measure here the breakdown voltage you measure here is called V B C E O it is a common emitter breakdown this is a different breakdown value than the breakdown value you get in common base remember that this breakdown you get by keeping the base floating ok you keep because I b equal to 0 you keep the base floating and you inject current 
okay and you see uh, sorry you 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 sweep the uh, output voltage vc and you see that the output current it will be very low because you are you are keeping the base floating at what point is it breaking down that is your common emitter breakdown voltage okay. Now there are very much very some some major differences that you will notice in both the modes of operation. First of all you will see that in common emitter maybe I can reduce all the annotations here you will see that in common emitter con you know common emitter operation at 0 volt on the collector your current is also 0 you see everything is coming to 0 can you see that everything is coming to 0. So, at 0 volt on the collector everything is coming to 0 it is like an FET a hemp a MOSFET a MOSFET where at drain voltage of 0 your all your drain current also comes to 0 that is how exactly it is. However, in the common base you see at 0 voltage here you have a finite current a pretty large current actually in the output which means to get to a 0 current on the output and the output characteristics you need to go negative 1 volt for instance and a minus 1 volt on the output voltage Vc it is like the drain voltage it is like in saying in a MOSFET or a hemp you are going to minus 1 volt on the drain to get a 0 drain current that is very very weird and strange. So, only at a negative output voltage your current is going to decrease and fall back to 0. So, the physics of both of them are separate okay the breakdown voltages are also separate and different in magnitude the idea is to understand why this is so okay so now we have to talk about two different condition so the first condition is that suppose you keep the reverse bias junction fixed the base and the collector junction voltage is kept fixed and you are going to change the base emitter voltage you are going to change the base emitter voltage okay then what will happen that is one situation. The second situation is if you keep the base emitter voltage constant and you are going to change the base collector voltage then what will happen okay. Those are two different situation and to understand the two, two different situations really well we need to just have a look at the base this is the base the base minority carrier profile because the slope of the base minority carrier profile will determine your emitter current and also the collector current okay. So, these are the different base emitter current profiles uh, for instance when your base collector is fixed your reverse bias on the base collector is suppose fixed which means the base width is fixed there is no early effect here there is no base width modulation here. So, the base collector bias being fixed means that your base width is also fixed. Now, when you have a changing emitter base voltage it means you are injecting different amounts of electrons to the from the emitter to the base depending on the base emitter voltage. Now, if you are injecting different amount of electrons from the emitter to the base it means your emitter current is going to be different. If the emitter current is going to be different remember that the slope of the minority carrier at this edge at the emitter base edge the slope of the minority carrier determines the injected emitter current. So, this different slopes this is a different slope this is a different slope this is a different slope this different slopes represent different minority carrier profiles slope at, at the base emitter you know this is basically the junction between the base and the emitter. It means that different amount of electrons are injected from the emitter to the base side they correspond to different base emitter voltages. For a base emitter voltage of 0 you see this P n 0 this P n 0 is the equilibrium or the baseline minority carrier profile concentration in the base. This is electron in the base of the BJT P type base of the BJT at equilibrium P n 0 that is the baseline. So, if you have B V 0 equal to 0 which means at the base and emitter junction you are applying 0 voltage that means you are not injecting any carrier from the emitter to the base. Then at the base emitter junction your starting point will be P n 0 which means because you are not injecting anything anything that you are injecting is here this is your injecting. So, if you are not injecting anything what is happening here is that if you are not injecting anything okay if you are not injecting anything this is your starting point if you are injecting anything you are here or here or here okay. So, you are not injecting anything so in that case slope looks like that because at this point it has to come to 0 because it is a base collector is reverse biased. So, this point any carrier that comes has to be swept away to the other side. So, this point has to come to 0 the slope keeps reducing here okay. 
So I'll come to all of this again. So in the next situation where you basically keep this constant and you keep varying the base collector, you keep varying the base collector bias. If we understand these two situations, then we can understand the common base and the common emitter configuration. That's why I'm talking about this. Okay. When you when you keep changing the base collector reverse voltage, it means your early effect can kick in, which means your base width can vary because the depletion from the base collector junction can spill over to the base side. Because it can spill over to the base side, your base width can keep changing. It can be here, it can be here, it can be here. The more the collector voltage, shorter is the base. Can you see that? So now, if I keep this fixed, if VBE is fixed, it means the amount of carriers I am injecting or amount of electrons I am injecting is also fixed. If the electrons that I am injecting is fixed, which means the delta N that I am injecting to the base is fixed, which this way this is fixed. So this delta N is the injected electron which is fixed which is the injected electron which is fixed because this point here it was not fixed because you are varying this but here it is fixed. However, the base collector width or the base width is changing. So, in some case the base width is here. So, the slope is here in some case it is here in some case it is here. So, the slope keep changing at this side and the base as the base width keep changing with more and more applied bias on the collector. So, okay, so, the slope of this side gives you the collector current the slope of this side gives you the sorry the, the emitter current the slope on this side gives you the collector current. If you remember that then we are good we are good to understand common emitter and common base here. So, now we will revisit common base. So, what happens in common base? In common base your base is grounded ok. So, if I look at this simple picture here of a NPN BJT this is common base. So, this is grounded and I am injecting carriers from the emitter correct that is how I am injecting this is all carrier injected from emitter no this 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 this. So, by for in, if this is grounded to inject carriers from the emitter how will electrons emit get this has to be forward biased this is n this is p. If the base is grounded for having it forward biased this has to be negative biased your emitter will get has to be negative biased in order for the emitter to inject electrons. So, the emitter this band you raise up you raise up because that is your negative bias. And because of negative bias, electrons will be emitted, the base is grounded, they will go and they will fall here. This is reverse bias, anyways. Correct, this is reverse bias, anyways. Right. So, now the question is, and and so, so as you keep increasing the as you keep increasing the uh, emitter injection current, you are going from 2 milliamp, 3, 4, 5 milliamp, what you are doing is that you are more and more negative biasing the base emitter junction. I mean negative you sorry you are applying more and more negative bias to the emitter electrode you can say because the base is grounded. So, the emitter has to be negatively are you not negatively biased yeah the emitter electrode has to be negatively biased in order to inject more and more current. And if you are injecting more and more current from this side more and more current you will get in the output side this is precisely what is happening. The conundrum here the puzzle here is why is that at 0 voltage on the collector at 0 voltage on the collector it is like the 0 voltage on the drain my drain current is not 0 and why I have to go to minus 1 volt on the collector to get a 0 current on the collector. This is precisely understandable from the band diagram. So, what is happening is that when at this point at 0 point, 0, 0 point at the collector when your collector is 0 your base is already uh, grounded I am talking about all these points this point this point this point ok. Here the base is kept floating but forget about it in general every point here the base is grounded and the collector is grounded which means the VCO is 0 0. The base and the collector from level are at the same level and they are 0 0 ok they are 0 0. What it means is that if your base and collector is like that this is base this is collector this is 0 this is 0 they are the same. However, the emitter is inject say 2 milliam, 3 milliam, 4 milliam, 5 milliam, 6 milliam the emitter is being increasingly the emitter electrode is being increasingly negatively biased ok. That is why it is injecting electrons to this side. Now, once the electrons are injected to this side this base is short. So, some of the electrons will recombine but some of them will reach the other side this edge anyways and even if this is a 0 bias there is a depletion region here is not it because there is a depletion region. So, once they reach here they will be swept over to this side 
which means there is a current that is coming, which is precisely what is happening here, here, here. Although the base and collector are 0, 0, but the emitter is injecting electron, electrons will go, will recombine, some of them will recombine, most of them will not recombine, that is why it is very high current. For 5 milliamp you are getting 5 milliamp, for 4 milliamp you are getting 4 milliamp, most of them will not recombine, reach the edge. There is a field at the depletion, although it is not reverse biased. So, reverse bias is necessary by the way, because this is entirely, this is reverse bias, this part collector being at higher positive voltage means that you are pushing the collector down, so the base collector is reverse bias like that. Reverse bias is necessary, other you do not, do not want to be here, only and this part you will get the RF voltage swing, no, so reverse of course the, the collector bias has to be reverse bias, but even at 0 you get high current. So what does it mean? It means that to get to a 0 current on the collector, to get to a 0 current on the collector you need to apply negative voltage on the collector, why? It means that if you have uh, suppose this is formula well, this is a 0, 0, this is 0, this is 0 and the emitter is injecting electron. You do not want the collector current to exist, you want the collector current to 0 which is precisely this point, correct? For that because the emitter is injecting this side no, you want that you, are, you have to raise the Fermi level on this side, you have to push the band upwards like that which means there has to be a negative voltage on the collector. So that electrons are also injected from this side. So that this electrons and that electrons will basically cancel each other and nothing will come out from the collector, IC is 0. That is why you have to go to a negative voltage like minus 1 volt to get a 0 collector current. Essentially <coughs> think of this as like the base Fermi level is here, the collector Fermi level, 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 level is here, but the emitter Fermi level is here. So emitter is going to inject electron and that is going to come out from the collector, you do not want that. So you raise the collector Fermi level here. So the collector Fermi level will try to inject from here, emitter collect, em, electric, inject electron from here, they will nullify and the collector current output is at the 0. This is your common base, okay, this is a common, common base configuration. Okay, this is what I precisely have written here, whatever I discussed here is whatever is, is written in the slide. Okay. Now how is this breakdown or how is this you know reverse saturation current measured here? It is measured by keeping the emitter current floating. Okay. Now what happens when the emitter current is floating? When the emitter current is floating it means your emitter electrode is uh, open, emitter is kept open. If the emitter is kept open, then which of these different curves will it be? It will be the bottommost curve, which means you remember in, I, in the previous two slides back, I told that if your base emitter voltage is 0, that means you are not injecting any electron from emitter to base, you have this point and this is your minority carrier profile in the base, correct? If your emitter is kept floating or open, if your emitter is kept floating or open, which means your emitter current your emitter current will be 0, correct? Your emitter current is 0, there is absolutely no current flowing out from the emitter, okay? Which means the slope at this point, the slope has to be 0. This is not a, this is a non-zero slope. This non-zero slope may mean that there is some current flowing across this. There may be some current flowing across this. Although the base emitter is 0, Depending on how the base collector looks like, there could be some current flowing here because there is a non-zero slope here. But when you say the emitter is zero, it means the slope has to be zero. A zero slope means something like this. A zero slope means something like that and so this is your minority care profile, okay? This configuration of the, of the device leads to extremely high break, I mean relatively speaking, leads to the highest breakdown voltage among all other configurations. Okay. It gives you a higher breakdown voltage than a common emitter configuration for instance. Okay. So this slope is 0, so you can see the minority care profile flows like fo follows a trend like that okay. because the slope has to be 0 here. Okay. So this saturation current that you are getting here, this is actually much lower than the usual reverse bias saturation, reverse saturation current in a regular p-n junction because in a regular p-n junction you do not have a profile like that. Okay. In a regular p-n junction, you just look at the reverse 
saturation current on a p side and side you know the, the the slope on other side but in a three terminal device you have this special condition where in a base it is emitter this is base in emitter base junction you are maintaining a zero slope at the emitter base junction of zero slope of minority carrier profile towards the base because the emitter is kept floating no current can come out of the emitter that's why the slope is zero and because the slope is zero the profile looks like that and because the profile looks like that you actually have you know the lowest current you can see that the slope here is also the lowest in this and because this is slope is the highest slope and because the slope is lowest you will get the lowest ic possible and the breakdown is also higher compared to say common emitter configuration okay we'll come to common emitter in the next slide now in common emitter what is the common emitter in common emitter i told you that emitter is grounded and you are injecting base current in common emitter configuration you can see that the current goes to zero at the zero collector voltage why same thing this condition you know for every this is some ib okay this condition corresponds to an emitter being zero this is zero and the collector will also be zero if this condition you are talking about so essentially you are talking about a emitter fermi level here which is zero the collector fermi level here which is also zero okay so if the emitter fermi level is zero collector fermi level is zero then the for any say uh, say 0 0.03 or 0 0.04 base current the base emitter junction is forward bias which means the emitter uh, sorry the base this is base this is emitter this is collector so the base emitter junction is forward bias for this an emitter is grounded so the base has to be the base electrode the p tab electrode has to be positively biased which means the base family level will be somewhere here this is the base family level okay so the electrons of our emitter will try to inject electron but the collector also will try to inject electron they will nullify and so your collector current will be zero this is precisely the same situation as uh, here here we talked about no in the in the base uh, in the in the common base we talked about this condition here this condition this condition this condition this where you have emitter at some level okay and the base is ground and the collector has to be at some level minus so that both of them feed electrons and the collector is zero this is precisely the same thing as here in a common emitter you have the emitter fermi level at zero collector fermi level at zero and the base at some positive both emitter and collector will try to feed in electrons and so they essentially the total collector current is zero that's why the collector current is zero at the zero uh, collector voltage okay other than that everything is very similar to understand okay this is precisely the same reason so as you can see this is a collect from level this is from level this is from level so your no collector current will flow because the emitter and the collector are exactly the same from level okay the vc is the vc is zero this is zero so there is no current that will, that will basically flow here okay this breakdown is measured here by keeping the base current floating a base current zero if the base current is kept zero or the base terminal is kept floating it will self bias itself to a slightly positive value to maintain the required you know carrier or the current distribution and that increases the slope so you can see that this is the open base for an open base the base current is zero you have a minority carrier profile like that which has a finite slope which has a finite slope okay so the current that is injected from this side may not flow out to the base it will flow out to the collector because the base current is zero okay is following up from here so there is a finite current so the background leakage current is also slightly higher and the breakdown is also slightly lower you see my point because the base is kept open or the base is kept floating it will float to its it will self float itself to a size slightly positive value when you keep the base at zero no the base current has to be zero you keep the base terminal open then you have emitter you have certain collector and your base is floating so it will adjust its bias such that the base current is zero and it seems that it is it 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 adjusts itself to a slightly positive value and the collector and emitter of course are at different potentials now so it's a slightly it's at 8 volt of collector for instance okay the collector is at 8 volt so collector is so that if the emitter is zero here collector is here 8 volt and this is zero the base will slightly forward bias here the base will slightly forward bias here so that this current ib is zero so it will go here that's why this is the profile of the minority carrier base and that leads to a larger leakage current because this is a finite slope and a larger leakage current also leads to a lower breakdown voltage so if you plot 
the this is the break, the current here on the y axis and on the x axis you are plotting the voltage. So, you can see this is your common emitter breakdown voltage, this is your common base breakdown voltage. You see the common base breakdown voltage is higher than the common emitter breakdown voltage point number 1. Point number 2 the overall leakage of the common emitter is actually more than the overall leakage of the common base. I told you in the pre previous slide precisely and the common emitter breakdown voltage is related to common base voltage by this expression ok. This in this SMG's book you can find the expression these are some <coughs> n is a coefficient and alpha to determine experimentally or empirically. Uh, I will come to Kirk effect later. So, using this expression people can estimate one or the other take home message is that common base gives you better breakdown voltage and a lower leakage current ok and common emitter will give you the higher breakdown voltage or uh, higher leakage and slightly lower breakdown voltage please keep that in mind. So, with that we will come to a conclusion for this lecture today where we discussed about the introduction of bipolar devices and we talked about common emitter common base we talked about the Gamel plot also and what will happen is that in the next class uh, lecture 43 we are going to talk about high injection effect namely the Kirk effect and from then we will go on to other uh, you know practical details of a bipolar device ok. So, thank you for your time I will see you in next lecture.